Welcome back to America's favorite YouTube hieroglyphic series, Doodling with Purpose. Not just America's, but also Asia and a good chunk of South America. Okay, the whole world. The whole world loves Doodling with Purpose. And today, we are going to get into the past tense, which is one of the most important tenses for ancient Egyptian because it all takes place in the past. All right. So as a quick review of where we've been, last week we did the specific present, which is the is some is hearing, is seeing. And we talked about that's how you add the her with a, with a uh, stroke line to in front of the verb. And it is, is, it becomes the word is. I should note, though, it also can mean are, because you are or they are. It wouldn't be right to say they is. It's the same word. And it's one of the easier parts of hieroglyphics. So remember your suffix pronouns, the I, you, you feminine, plural, he, she, we, and they. Definitely, these are big ones to memorize and start working on flashcards. There's, they're going to come up a lot as we build out sentence structure. And as a side note, how is and are are the same word. The word for I, which is the, the man, the person, is also the word for me and my. So again, it's one of the easier parts of hieroglyphic, and you just look at the context of the sentence to figure out if you want which word to translate it to. All right. So with that out of the way, it is time to dive into the past, and that's a great tense to learn because Egypt is the past. So this tense actually has a name. It's called Sejemenef, which is spelt he heard. That's what they call their past tense, he heard, pronounced Sejemenef. All right, so this is also written in a specific way, how like in the general present, we have an equal sign and then the... Uh, suffix pronoun. So much like that, when we're writing the past tense, we're going to have the verb dot n equals the suffix pronoun. And I'm going to explain all of this, but that's the way to write it in transliteration. All right, so let's look at the past tense. So here is the verb for saw, or see, excuse me, and we need to change it to saw or seen. So the first thing we do is if it's a doubling verb, you remove the extra consonant. In the past, doubling verbs don't have a double, and that's one of the ways in context to know you're dealing with the past. The next thing you do is every verb, no matter what type, gets an N at the end. This is essentially an ED, like cried, stopped, played. I know not every verb in English has an ED, but that's what the N at the end of the verb means. It's an ED. So I know the obviously the past tense of see is seen, not see it, but Think of it like an ED, so that's why you add the N at the end of every single verb. Then under that, you're going to put the suffix pronoun. So in this case, I'm using the horn viper for he. So this would translate into he saw. But we're not quite done yet because there's other clues to help you know you're in the past tense. And of course, you can interchange any suffix pronoun. You can have he, you can have she, which is the bolt of cloth, which is s, or you could have you, which is the basket with a uh, handle on it, and you know then it's you saw. Again, it can be seen or saw. One of the easier parts of hieroglyphic is uh, there's not different spellings for the different tenses of the verb. The other thing that is your hint that you're in the past tense is what's called an auxiliary. This is iw, I w, the um, papyrus and then the bird. So what u is or iw however you want to pronounce it, you, it's, well, it, it doesn't really have a translation into English. What it literally means is someone did something, and it's your hint that you were in the past tense. And that's why there's all these context hints to help tell you what tends to translate into, if you, because a lot of the verbs are spelled the same way. So if a verb has you before it, so let's look at the verb to see. So we've eliminated the double consonant, as double consonants do, or double verbs do not have the double consonant in the past tense, and we also don't have to now pronounce the second a because the ho is ma, and then the vulture is a. So now we can remove that double a. We're going to add the n, the wave at the end of it. That's your ed. So going from to c to saw, and again remember the i there is a determinative that's just moved for, uh, makes it look prettier, <laughs> basically. All right, so in transliteration, it'll be M-A dot N, and that's just to help you as a, as a reader read the word easier, and then equals your suffix pronoun. 
And again, I'm just going to use him or he just for sanity's sake. So we've got the horned viper there. So ma dot n equals f, meaning he saw. But as I mentioned, we're also going to add that auxiliary, which is the iw before it. And that is really just your clue. Think of it as a signpost that says you're about to do a past tense sentence. So literally, it would translate to, he did something in the past, he saw. But we really just read this as, he saw. The IW doesn't have a true English equivalent, and it's just a signpost to tell the reader that you're about to enter the past tense. Don't worry about the fact that it, you know, just IW means that whole sentence, they did something in the past. Just kind of accept it. It's part of hieroglyphics. Don't get, you know, hung up on it. You just kind of see it as a signpost, and it's it's there to help you. So you're, you'll not translate this as he did something in the past he saw, but just he saw with the N and whatever suffix pronoun. You know, she saw, they saw, we saw, feminine version of you. All right, so all of the different verb forms, essentially, doubling verbs lose the double. They all get the N, they all get a suffix pronoun, and they all get the auxiliary IW, U, before the verb. And that's how you know you're in the past. That's your hint that you are, you know, using a past tense verb as opposed to a present tense or a specific, pre specific, specific present tense with the is. Excuse me, I apparently can't talk today. Talking is never part of recording YouTube videos, is it? And this is transliterated as the verb dot n equals, and then the letter for the pronoun. So, ma'a dot n equals f, if we're dealing with he. So, you can freeze frame on this, and uh, it's a good one to look at. So, here's all your hints. So, the past tense is done by adding an n, then the pronoun preceded by iw before it. Now, there is a negative version of the past, a negative version of the future, a negative version of the present, as well as the relative form and the participle. Now, some of these follow English ways, some of them don't, but we're not going to jump into them quite yet, because we need to spend a few weeks learning more vocabulary before we get into more tenses. But we have enough tenses. We know, we know the infinitive, we know the present tense, we know the past tense, and the specific present tense. So that'll be enough for now, and we're going to dive into some vocabulary over the next few weeks before hitting those other tenses that don't really have an English equivalent. I hope you enjoyed this continuing series, and uh, if you have any questions or need clarification, just leave it in the comments below. I make sure to answer all of them. Liking this video and subscribing is also great because it helps support the channel and tell YouTube to share it with more people. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.